gentlemen, welcome to another highly interesting Delphi Economic Forum um, discussion. We are here to discuss economic recovery, but under a different point of view, because in my mind, economic recovery is always interconnected with uh, jobs. Greece is um, about to receive the first funds from the RRF, so we are discussing a massive boost of capital, and at the same time, we are going also to discuss the boosting of uh, private investment in the country uh, with um, a focus in the jobs market. Uh, originally, we were scheduled to discuss this topic with the Minister of Labor, Mr. Kostis Hadzidakis, and Mr. Matt Britton, the president of Google for Europe, uh, the Middle East, and Africa. Uh, unfortunately, Mr. Hadzidakis could not make it due to a personal emergency, but I am joined here by Mr. Britton. Unfortunately, he is virtually with us. Matt, hello. Good morning, George. Hello, everybody. It's, I wish I was with you in person. I'm regular at this forum, but um, next time with my feet and body as well. Thank I you, hope that you. next year will be an opportunity to discuss matters with flesh and body here in Athens. And alongside us is uh, Mr. Spiros Protopsaltis. He is the governor of OAED. Mr. Protopsaltis, welcome at the Delphi Economic Forum. Thank you very much for the invitation. I appreciate it being here. Great. I think we're going to have a very interesting discussion. If you allow me, Mr. Protopsaltis, I will start with Mr. Britton. Um, Google is investing in Greece, is robustly investing in Greece. Um, and I want us to make an image in our heads and think of a small restaurant in a Greek island. It has a traditional operational way. He, the, the owner of the restaurant knows to do a certain kind of job in a certain manner. Do you, th do you think he needs to entirely rethink his business model? Or um, will it be sustainable in the new digital era uh, environment so that it is actually sustainable? It's a great question, and thank you for taking it to a personal level. I mean, I think what we've seen in the last year is that the use of digital has leapt forward, maybe by five or 10 years, depending on the country. Uh, and it's also become clear how digital tools can be a lifeline in lockdown and will be, I think, a big catalyst for economic growth. So I do think that, you know, every business now is a digital business because every consumer is using digital tools to research. And I'll take your example of a small business. Actually, we, we had somebody who, who came on some of the training that we've been doing in Greece. We've trained about um, 200,000 people in the tourism industry over the last four years in Greece in digital skills. So Mrs. Natina Danaxa, who uh, with her husband left Athens in the recession, went to his hometown on Santorini and they bought with their last savings, a small hotel called Enantina Houses Hotel. And she came to us for digital skills training, some of the things which we've been doing in partnership with the ministry. And as a result of that, was able to reach out and find customers to um, help them to plan their vacation and to help them to replan their vacation. And she saw that she was able to get more bookings in 2020 than 2019 as a result. So we're not talking about being a coder, writing algorithms. We're talking about the tools that you apply in the modern world. We're talking about opening up to the brave big world, I think. Yeah, look, it's, it's the job of companies like Google to make the tools as simple and useful as possible. And I think the great thing about what we've been doing in Greece is the partnership between communities and government in the, in the shape of the Ministry of Labor and the Manpower Employment Organization and Google to try to bring these things together. So last month we announced that we're we are investing in a further 3,000 certificates mm -hmm. for unemployed youth, and the government is funding internships so that those people who are trained can then be employed. And we've seen this really successfully. We did it last year with the government, we're doing it again. And we've also announced that we are um, investing a million dollars, which today actually we're adding another half million to that to help economic recovery particularly including people in underrepresented groups. Often we see that women or poorer communities are left behind and also digital literacy to make sure that 
people are safe online as well. So I hope that together with the government, mm. our investment and a half million more today on top of a million last year will help us to see an acceleration in the recovery as things start to open up. At first, this is news that we have an extra investment in this program, as Matt announced. But let me come to you, Mr. Protopsaltis, and discuss a bit closer this partnership with Google and uh, OIL for the reskilling and upskilling of young Greek employees. What is this program actually? How does it work? And was there actual interest from young people to be reskilled and upskilled? Indeed, we had begun, we had started discussions with Google even before the pandemic about partnering to provide digital skills training to the unemployed. Mm. And the timing could not have been better in the sense that as soon as everything turned into digital because of the pandemic, we were ready with a very nice, very good program to provide digital marketing skills to unemployed youth. And then we would couple that training with a fully subsidized six month paid internship so they can actually apply the, the skills that they learned in a work environment. We had phenomenal response and the, the response was so overwhelming that we ended up doing a second cycle okay. because the first immediately was all the- How many over applications? We had for the first program about two and a half thousand applications in six days, I think. Okay. For, for a total of 3,000 spots. So that program closed very, very quickly. We did a second cycle, and now we're implementing the fully subsidized internship program. Mm. Given the response, and given how important it is to partner with tech giants like Google to provide quality and, and quick training to the unemployed, we recently announced, as Mr. Britton just said, um, a new program where 3,000 unemployed youth will be trained in very high demand areas, such as data analytics, project management, user experience design, IT support, and they're gonna gain a career certificate. Google has just now launched these career certificates in Europe, and Greece is one of the first places where they're gonna be offered. So we're building on that partnership, we're engaging in further discussions to expand this partnership, and I'll be honest, because this partnership went so well, we've actually expanded and partnered with Amazon, with Cisco, with Coursera, with a number of other companies, exactly because we saw how successful this was and how much demand there is for this sort of skills training. I will come back to that. I want to pose a question to Matt Britton on this. Why do you find the, the Greek labor market interesting for such a program to be applied? What are those skills that have not been fully taken advantage of and are a field of interest for Google? That's a great question. I think, um, as uh, Dr. Protopsalis uh, said, you know, this actually goes back to some years before the pandemic. Uh, we had seen that uh, there was a gap between businesses that were using digital tools, their growth, their exports, their employment rate, and those that weren't. And that gap's become wider in the pandemic. So why Greece? Well, if you think about online, your own experience, um, searching for vacations is probably one of the most valuable things you do with online in terms of the money you end up spending. So, you know, you've got a country where the tourism industry is so important and where the tools are available now so that somebody like uh, Mrs. Danaxa, who I mentioned, or, or your restaurant owner, can now compete globally. They can put their property up and reach people in Japan or Jakarta uh, who are looking for a holiday. And so it was a good spot for us to sort of put to test our theory that every business is a digital business. And so we learned a lot from that. And, and as the doctor said, you know, uh, we've trained 200,000 professionals in tourism in Greece over the last few years. Not only that, and you, know, you, you, you said very kindly, Dr. Protopsalsis, that, uh, you know, the work with Google has triggered your partnership with others. Our work in Greece four or five years ago triggered us to launch this program across Europe. And we've been blown away by demand. So, so Greece was a kind of, of a testing this. area. It's always in partnership. It's always in partnership. And now we've trained, I think, something like 7 million people in Europe uh, in digital skills. And we also find it's a really good way of helping to bring underrepresented groups in. We need an economic recovery that's inclusive of everyone. So, you know, our programs across Europe, we find 50% women 
um, which is quite unusual in something that sounds technology oriented, often that's 25 to 30 percent. So now is the time for us to double down. And I'm delighted that we're doing that here in Greece together. Governments, communities and companies to put these tools to work in service of an accelerated economic recovery, an economic recovery that's inclusive. That's why this port program reaching unemployed young people is so important and an economic recovery that's sustainable because you're building skills that are going to help businesses grow into the future. This is very interesting, uh, Mr. Protopsaltis. I'm coming to uh, two key terms for me. The one is inclusiveness, of course, and the other is uh, competitiveness. Um, what do you think is the main advantage and the main disadvantage of Greek labor in this new era that is emerging in this digital environment? And how can we actually be competitive, but not only as cheap labor, but also as competent labor? I think the point that Mr. Britton made was a, is a very important one. In a country with a high unemployment rate, the fact that we have such a, such a significant skills mismatch problem is a huge challenge for the nation. We have one third of employers responding that they're having difficulty finding people with the right skills to fill open jobs at the same time where we have such a high unemployment rate. So there are open jobs. There are open jobs, but people don't have the right skills. So what's very important for Europe, and this is something that has been emphasized by all European leaders, is not just to create new jobs, is to train people to have the skills for these new jobs. And so what we are trying to do now is to close this mismatch problem, to address it. How do we do that? We have to take advantage of the wonderful tool called the European Recovery and Resilience Facility, which is going to boost the recovery effort. And which is why Greece has put reskilling and upskilling at the front and center of its plan for employment and social cohesion by investing over a billion euros through the facility in the massive and quick reskilling and upskilling of its workforce by building a modern workforce development system that's based on results, is data-driven, responds to the needs of the labor market in the economy, and builds a labor force that has the skills to adapt and be successful in a knowledge-based global economy I'm that's going, constantly changing. I'm going to specifically come to the Greek project on the RRF funds and uh, discuss a bit your strategy more on this thing, but uh, uh, just to follow up sure. on... On, on something that is, you know, highly interesting. We, we have massive unemployment rates. We've had massive unemployment rates over the past years. And it's always a paradox to hear that there are open spots that are not filled because there is not the adequate training and there are not the adequate skills in place. Do you see a tendency with investments like the one by Google or other tech giants in the country to actually close this gap? Because, you know, it, it's very easy to have access to your iPhone and your iPad and just Google things. But business skilling is something completely different. Absolutely. And that is why these programs yeah. are short term. They are fast. They are provided by quality providers with quality content, such as Google and others. And the employers recognize the training and they trust it. So people coming out of these programs actually are in a competitive position to fill these jobs. Mm. And the competitiveness of the nation depends on our ability to close this mismatch and to provide the necessary skills. Look, traditionally in Greece, we have not done a good job connecting the needs of the economy with our education system. Mm. And we have also not built a resilient and timely an agile workforce development system, which is why our proposal for the RRF, I believe, is in the right direction and is going to make significant headway in addressing this challenge, which is also an opportunity, of course. Yeah. Mr. Britton, something to add on this? Well, yeah, I just say it's, it, yeah, exactly as you said, it's really important to get these uh, skills into the market. Um, People fear, I think, sometimes the headlines, which is, you know, automation and technology is going to destroy jobs. It's easy to write the headline. But when you do the detailed research, what you see is that most jobs will be altered a bit in terms of the tasks and how you do them by technology. Just like 
electrification means that you don't spend so much time stacking your dishwasher. You can spend more time doing other things around the house. So most jobs won't be um, fundamentally uh, changed. There will be changes in how we operate, but there will be a shift. You know, some jobs will shift uh, through automation and the people we need to really reskill are those people who need to go into those new jobs. And I think the pandemic's accelerated that. The good news is this kind of training is proven. You know, it's light, it's uh, immediate, just as Dr. Pratap Tausit said, uh, it's something which we can do in an agile way. And when you measure, and we've measured this across Europe, I think we've got over a million people who've now reported back and told us that the majority have gone on to get a new job, to start a business or to grow a business. And that's ultimately goal. It's one thing to get certificates out there, and it's another thing to actually get the impact of these people finding employment and putting their work to good use. And then if you see businesses with digital skills, we know they're growing faster, they're exporting more, and they're hiring more people. So that's a real mission. Digital tools are for everyone, and it's up to us in partnership. And I think that's the other key insight here. We can't do it alone. Um, the government ministry needs the latest and best technology, and neither of us can do it without the communities that are most affected coming forward and saying, I want to try this. And so by reporting on this kind of initiative, I hope that we'll be able to continue to scale it and see more and more people going, actually, maybe this is for me. Yeah. Getting over that confidence hurdle of saying digital sounds technical to realizing that, you know, with tools like these, we can make it simple to grow a business. Let me be the devil's advocate on this, because you said digital tools are actually for everyone. And in theory, I agree with you, but in practice, I find it's always easier for someone who, you know, is eager to Google or use um, his iPhone or his iPad, as I mentioned previously. But what about people in their 50s, in their 60s, who are still active in the labor market and are afraid that in yeah. this new digital era, in this new environment, they are going to be uh, left behind and actually be put out of business because before they make their retirement? I, 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 want, a, a country, I want your answer, yeah. Matt, and of course I want an answer from Mr. Protopsalis on that. Yeah, of course, it's a key concern. And, and while the program we talked about uh, with the government has been targeting unemployed young people, we've actually done a range of programs across the world now. Um, and what we find is where the programs are not targeting young people, the average age is over 40. So actually, what you find is this is lifelong learning. Many of the people who've been on our programs have potentially taken a redundancy package or they're coming back into the labor market after parental leave and they're reskilling. I think this is one of the challenges for the formal education segment. It's very focused on youth. Mm. But actually, you know, we're going to live hopefully very long lives. The Greeks are <laughs> showing us the way. And we're going to need to reskill ourselves throughout our lives. And now that you've got the entire internet, you know, in your pocket, Android is also available, by the way, George, there's iPhones, but Android's more popular, then <laughs> you've got the opportunity to reach out and learn from everybody. So I think we want to embrace that opportunity, as I say, you know, this is for everyone. It's not just for the young people. It's not just for the tech savvy. We need to get over the hurdle of confidence to say, yeah, you can learn these things. And uh, at Google, we pride ourselves on making our, our, our technology simple. So you don't need to be able to uh, code in order to search the world's internet. You don't even need to be able to type. You can use your voice. And so we, it's our job to make things as simple as possible yeah. and then work in partnership um, to help everyone retool. Mr. Protopsaltis? Yeah, that's exactly right. The old model, I go to school, mm. I go to university, I get a job, and I never set my foot again into a classroom, is over. That doesn't exist anymore. Everybody's going to constantly have to upskill and reskill because things are changing so fast and technology and the transformations occurring are so significant. However, Mr. Vianidis does point a very significant issue, which is digital illiteracy. Mm. There is a segment of the population that cannot fully participate in our democracy, in our society, and in our economy, of course, because they lack those skills. Yes. Here in Greece, we've done a huge digital transformation in the past year in terms of government services. Well, people can't access them if they don't know how to use a computer and they don't know how to log on, et cetera, et cetera. That is why we have significant investments in tackling digital illiteracy in our proposal for the RRF. And I believe that it's key to provide basic digital skills to a significant portion of the population. At the same time, though it's not an either or, we need both and basic digital skills, but also advanced skills. And skills like the quick programs that we're talking about, which actually 
I just want to follow up on what Mr. Britton said. The people who participated, participated in our partnership with Google, 96 percent responded saying this was one of the best courses I ever took. Okay. This was fantastic. So we got feedback from the participants themselves telling us how much it helped them. And that was further validation from the participants that this was a quality program that actually gave them the skills that they need to compete in the labor market. But you are absolutely correct that it can't be a one-size-fits-all. We need to tackle all the different populations, different target groups with programs that specifically address their unique needs. Uh, we are uh, running short of time, but I have two last questions for each uh, one of you. Uh, touching upon the Greek plan on the RRF, Mr. Protopsaltis, could we say this is practically the, the, the last shot, the last opportunity for us to change the nature of our workforce here? It's definitely a historic opportunity for us to turn the page, begin a new chapter in this yeah. country, and put the nation on a new trajectory of economic growth. Mm. And that is why I believe that the plan is, obviously, I believe it's very solid. But I also think that it's very wise that we are invest investing in the most important capital, which is the human capital. The most important resource of this country is its people. And unless we invest in their skills and knowledge, we're not going to be able to maximize and utilize our full potential and realize our full potential. That is why I believe investing in employment programs, in skills programs, in reforming our education system, and especially our vocational education system, and trying to tie closer the needs of the private market with what the education system delivers is key. Mr. Britton, though, hit a very important point. It can only be done with partnership. What we have done, private sector and government working together and using each other's advantages and yeah. unique um, this was a taboo in Greece for many years. Ex exactly. <laughs> and this is why we're trying to prove with actual programs yeah. that not only this is possible, it's a win-win situation. Mm -hmm. Everybody gains from this. So that's the future. I think the RRF takes a giant step forward in that direction. And I'm very optimistic that in a few years we're going to see the impact of the plan on the Greek economy and society. I hope you are correct in uh, this assessment, Mr. Britton. Um, Greece is going to be on a growth trajectory for the coming years. The government has said to, uh, you know, be friendly to investment. You have uh, had a long year presence in the country. Are you planning to further invest in Greece in the coming years, either in smaller scale programs or in larger scale activities? Yeah, um, well, based on all the things we talked about today, uh, we continue to increase our investment. And actually, I just want to go to the point you made about being inclusive. So, you know, we've announced today that we're adding half a million on top of the one million we've already distributed to Greek NGOs, specifically to try to help economic recovery, inclusion and media literacy and online safety. And I think that's working with local um, non-governmental organizations, the community effectively to try to support that. So, you know, we try to watch and learn and then be quick about how we build on. And, and this is because what we've seen in, in partnership with the ministry is working. What we've seen in partnership with uh, the communities is working. So we'll continue to invest. And, you know, I'm optimistic, although we're in a tough time, the fact that the world's leapt forward five years in a few months means that every business is digital, half the planet yes. is online, and Greek entrepreneurs, and particularly in the tourism sector, have the chance to reach half the planet. Uh, and that's never happened before. That's an enormous opportunity. And I'm really looking forward to being back in Greece soon. And I think many, many people around the world would. We hope to have you soon. Mr. Britton, Matt, thank you very much. Mr. Protopsaltis, thank you very much for thank this you. highly interesting discussion, a discussion from the future. And thank you all for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Stay tuned.